Okay. You got your sound? Like, I, don't know. <clears throat> I got you. Hey, man, what's up? Hey, then. Mexico is good, man. It's cool. Yeah, I was going to ask you about it. That's great. You needed it. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's pretty cool. Like, uh, uh, having a fresh fresh mind after that is good. It's good. So I, I want to actually make sure uh, we can get back there. No, I really liked it. it it's... Uh, uh, maybe try to get out there once or twice a year. It's it's good. Reefs and stuff. Different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. There you go. Yeah, man. Just in time for winter. Yeah, man. Um. <clears throat> so we've had so we've had three bites on the electrical. Yeah. Electricians. Uh huh. Um. Jerry Bartlow actually CC'd you when he responded. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. So, look, I think the next step is to invite them out for an open house to see exactly what's going on and to meet you. Oh, yeah? Okay. I, in other words, I think I'm, I've reached the limit of what I can vet remotely. So, uh, out of everybody, we, the three, <laughs> three you think, we think we can work with? Well, three have explicitly said that they're interested. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, SNS is Sean Slocum, TDR is Daniel Timberlake, and Jerry Bartlow is just Bartlow Electrical. Um, funny story, when I reached out to Bartlow Electrical, I got his father, who, re who sold the business to his son. Um, so, I, I don't think you're going to get the perfect match, but, but I was surprised in the way I pitched it, that at least three of them responded that they were potentially interested. And welcome, Brian. It's good to see you. Hello. Hey, Brian. Good to see you. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So Now, I, I will say that Sean and Daniel Timberlake um, both asked about compensation. Mm -hmm. it, you know? I haven't gotten a response back from, them at, from my explanation. You were CC'd on that traffic, but like... Um, so yeah, what should we do explicitly? So should I follow up with them and say yeah, come on out or or like try to talk yeah, I I phone? would. I I mean w whatever works best for you, but like yeah, maybe a phone call at first yeah, so they can get a handle on it um, and make sure that I didn't mislead them. Um, yeah. So like for for example, Sean Slocum, um, when I asked him. I gave a very vague introduction to it over the phone, and he's like, we don't pull permits on work that we don't do. Okay. So he he may have a condition to participating in which like he's the one who actually is on site helping, in which case it would drive the cost up. But if we can build that into like he's a part of the crew, potentially. Yeah, sure. That may change things. So anyways, the, you know, a lot of things are on the table, um, and given... Like I'm not fully caught up to where we are in terms of like land selection and how that impacts our timeline now. Yeah. But um, it it may be one of those things where it's like, okay, great, thanks for showing your interest. Let's schedule a, a in person visit so you can see the actual prototype, and then I'll keep you updated once we get closer to breaking ground. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll follow up with them. I think that's probably the best. Just to get them. I think we still need that. I think none of them said that they're capable of actually, like vetting the d actual design like so because we got to submit that 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 comes from an electrical engineer so i think yeah we, we don't have a way around that i mean that was tougher you may have to go outside of st joe for that so i i put a request in for rs electrical services which is a uh, commercial electrical firm mm -hmm. uh they're actually located they have a location in st joe and i mm -hmm. i did like an online inquiry and i haven't heard back yet okay yeah, I'll follow up. So, yeah. Yeah, we'll do that. So, as far as the engineer, man, yeah, they're three weeks late right now. <clears throat> it's basically this kind of a game where we submitted everything to full CAD, and then they're saying, okay, here's a standard detail. And then I, I respond, well, that's not how we're doing it. <laughs> we're kind yeah. of going back yeah, and yeah. forth. <laughs> right. It's, it's kind of like, um, it kind of shows the I efficiency of the system. It's like... Yeah, we're used to um, standard standard stuff, and if you're going out of the box, it's like it becomes a whole pain. You gotta 
Because it means yeah. work for them. They actually got to do something instead of right. like... God, God, yeah, God forbid they have floor. to break out their fucking force tables. <laughs> yeah, so that's where we're at. I mean, that's... We're still potentially going to build in November. We'll see. I mean, <laughs> I mean, we don't have okay, the yeah, yeah. so we'll see how long the engineer... I can't push them. I mean, I'm responding to right. them as fast as I can. So, um, kind of go with the flow. And uh, So... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, I was just going to say, uh, are you caught up to the updates I've made to my wiki page about the last meeting Brian and I had with Lisa? And Mel- uh, not so much. I, Melissa I, wasn't there. I, well, I, I did see it in that, yeah, the, the answers were positive. So if we can switch to that topic, looked like it was all go. Um, so, yeah, let's switch to this then. Okay, Tell cool. Tell me more what, what else is relevant from the meeting. Because I think the outcome was that, okay, yeah, this is still good. They were encouraging. Yeah, I'm curious to know what Brian, how Brian felt walking away from that. To me, she gave us a green light. Yeah. Cool. So. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, my one of my big takeaways was, to maximize points, we have to uh, be asking for less money than four million. Mm-hmm. Um, so like, the one hundred and fifty from Novo. Plus, if we're getting landing co- or in-kind donations, we can factor that in as the matching, um, and then calculate the full ask amount from there. Um, and the other big takeaway for me is like we just have to draw really clear boundaries around what what a apprenticeship timeline is and how many of those cycles we expect to fit in between now and 2026. Okay. Yeah. Which it actually doesn't really matter all that much because if we're capped at say 600 grand asking <clears throat> then that 600 grand would, would probably be filled out through just like the first couple classes i'm guessing or first few, first year of classes or something like that uh, we just have to be careful about how we articulate it and also it's it's not a it's not a check of this money it's a reimbursement right so, you know, you got to have it, I guess, to spend it. Yeah, which which I think is fine. If the apprenticeship's running, there's cash flow. So that would help basically like, okay, here we're spending on develop, developing things. Instead of taking that out of the, the proceeds, we're, we've got this other source that we can get reimbursed from. Right. Um. I, I think we might, okay, so like, I, given our timeline, I think the most important thing to walk away with this meeting with is who's doing what and what the next deadline is. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, so what's it look like for the, the, the absolute deadline is what, uh, October 29, was it? Correct. And in between that, so how do we divvy up? Uh, we, we mentioned already about spend narrative there's that's one part well do you want to take a couple minutes and go through the document i just sent so you can see what all the requirements are yeah yep all right i'm I'm gonna put myself on mute for a second
Where's question two? You go from question one to question three. If I skipped a question, it was because it was like a piece of admin info or like a selection box that okay. wasn't.
<clears throat> Have you guys been able to take a look at it? Yeah. You need more time? Yeah, give me just a little bit. I want to go through the rest of the questions. Cool.
All right. <clears throat> All right, so you've seen the landscape. Mm -hmm. Do you do you have any idea of where the best place to start is? Divvy up tasks. Who can do what? Okay. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> so that's what we're talking yeah. about. Yeah. Um, I'll take. What do I take? What do you guys want to take? I mean, playing to strengths, I think you needed anything that has granularity with numbers, I would yeah. do the budget narrative primarily. Um, I think Brian and I are best suited to answer impact questions. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um, and then in section three, question 10, um, the smart goals related to the beneficiaries that's kind of a big one um uh, which question section three question 10 <clears throat> there should be an outline on this on the page as well i don't know if you have to open that up question 10 Yep, you found it. Okay. Okay. I mean, that that just may be a group project, but. <clears throat> in terms of one thing, I was curious about is: Do you uh, have an idea of which be beneficiary groups we think we should pick? Yeah. Um, yeah, I was looking at that before. Let's see. Okay, so group. Let's see. Do you know if certain federal benefits involves vets? <clears throat> different. Um, no, not not in this case. I mean, it it may, but I think I think the easy answer is unemployment. It's a Group A beneficiary. Um, most clearly fits with us because of the apprenticeship model. Mm -hmm. It plays to our strengths in that we don't we don't require credentialing before you show up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I would say a first point, and maybe um, we can. It, it'll give it gives us options to select a primary group and then secondary groups, and the primary group is the one that contributes to points. So, like, you know, underemployed people in Group B is just as valid. Um, incarcerated individuals, even even that would work. Long term unemployed due to COVID, like that's fairly straightforward. Yeah. Uh, how about the first point of A and first point of B? Yeah. Agree. Um, I feel pretty comfortable taking on uh, section three, or at least getting us started with section three um, up to question 10. And if I need help, I can always. Um, reach out over time. Uh, in terms of section four, 
Um, I think... I think I would need help a little bit. Question four is another big one. It's like a, it's the overview of the project question. And so we can recycle a lot of the stuff that Brian wrote for the previous grant, but I think we need to tailor it a little bit to the audience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Brian, do you want to take a sw swing at that? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm on, I'm bad, but on mute. Um, do we want to get an alignment on like the specific things that we're applying for? Because I could see us writing three different, four different versions if we're not clear on like, mm -hmm. you know. Because in theory, we could apply it all to the renovation, you know, all that money. Renovation of the existing facility. I think I think my vote would be the the project that we're writing about is the CD Go Home Apprenticeship. Okay. Yeah, CD Go Home Apprenticeship. So what's required to support that? Uh, in my view, it's I uh, still maintain to the rapid learning part. Infrastructure upgrades are in so far as we've got good working space. Uh, the remodeling is like for classroom facility, if we hold class here, like as opposed to at MCC or something, I mean, we do want to hold class here, so probably um, go out of the hab lab and make, make it like one big classroom, uh, open space inside there um, and then uh, rapid learning. So that would be a like the rapid learning part like like educational equipment equipment as in like the training the, the concept of the training base that I mentioned where you have um, just really optimized infrastructure for learning like the prepared modules that you play with like Legos to quickly get a handle on the concepts and and things taught yeah yes yeah, so that that would be capex in support of the apprenticeship though yeah um that is, that's not too much i mean i i see the biggest part is when i think about rapid learning materials is it's about getting some of the best people in the fields and asking them for consulting time like like you hire an engineer and they download mm -hmm. like all their best stuff because that's the kind of stuff that's not available in college. Mm -hmm. In college, you get the watered down stuff, never the state of art because all state of art is proprietary. The closest mm -hmm. people to the state of art. So, say we're in, you know, Sam, I'm thinking further about this and thinking about okay, now we're developing the 3D printers for for doing the panels. Which I mean, I, I want to see that like once we get established, that's going to be our critical. Uh, lowering of the cost, going to CEBs and printed parts. So literally, the whole whole mo whole modules printed with CEB. What I would envision is a mid layer 3D printed of honeycomb that's insulated with two layers of brick. So crazy stuff like that, where it's like you're getting down to trash or dirt costs <laughs> if you have the machines to do that. Um, now that requires development, and that's why I was saying t for on one side, we teach people what we already know. Of course, the, here's the CD, go home. And then eventually we keep inching towards perfecting our game. But that does mean educating people rapidly on all these topics, which are otherwise, you know, SpaceX exotics, because nobody shares that kind of level of info. So, so we're using a lot of this cash to buy expertise from people who are the consultant types that can get us towards the best practice. It's a little different than um, kind of initially with OSC, I was thinking along the lines of, oh, well, we do have all the technology available to make a better world for everybody. Well, yes, we don't need to do, invent anything, but we need to uncover it. That's kind of how I, I look at it. And, and that discovery process is actually very expensive. 
because we're finding out, you know, the, narr the greater narrative of the project is, yeah, you can get volunteers to help out, but it turns out that some of the best people, you can't get them for free, naturally. I mean, that seems kind of obvious, but... Uh, so, so our approach is Robin Hood, where, where we pay dearly for the best stuff and give it away to everybody. And that yeah. costs a lot of money. So that's, that, to me, is the number one cost. That, and that's called the curriculum. We're going to teach you the best stuff, including creating modules within FreeCAD, Blender, Sweet Home, other open programs, including, like, the multimedia, multiplayer online games, like right. all, that, all that kind of stuff. I mean, doable right now, but it requires the top, top individuals in each of those fields to come in and ship in their time. So... Uh, that's that's kind of like my does that does that narrative make sense for for why? Because we're we're promising we're not just going to teach you the stuff you can learn in, in a text. We're we're going like way integrated, way beyond that. Yeah. To really, pr uh, really push the limits of education, which people talk well, that, about. That, yeah, that, that's yeah that yeah. that makes sense. That that's paragraph three and four of the five paragraph response just looking at the scope of this grant um like they what we're selling is a vision of how we're going to get people trained and recruited to to become employed mm -hmm. and and so like that's a key part of it that'll help me fill out the answers for sure yeah and and i want to promise you start out at the top rate in the industry that's huge right but it requires a lot of resource to do that like Right. You know, we tried last year and it doesn't work. We need infra more infrastructure. Right. Um, so that's that's kind of how I think about it. And then it's beautiful because cause nobody's... Um, I don't think like a lot of people understand this concept that you don't, you really, really don't have access to rapid learning or the best materials. That's huge. That is huge. And we're going to address that. And that's... It's a, subtle, it's a subtle thing. It's the elephant in the room. People think, oh, yeah, like you go to school and you get all pumped up. <laughs> but it's not. It, we can do so much better. Right. Including modern, the modern digital technologies, augmented reality training, like just that, like getting augmented reality training on building other modules. So you got your glasses, you got your materials in front of you, and a thing tells you what to do and stuff like that. I mean, that's, that's how... Um, Oh yeah, some of this already exists. Like, some, uh, I think that a lot of the trades already have this kind of stuff, and we can, or we can, yeah. ben how we can benefit the world there is we're going to make all of that open source so that now we got our program, we can train you. But if you don't need us, just go and use all our materials for free, and the world becomes so much better. Wow! Right? Imagine an AR program that just basically slowly you build a house. Well, that's exactly it. That's exactly it, and. And and that's that's doable, but it it's it's that's like a million dollar R and D project. And that's why I said it's like let's get those millions in. Um, it's basically you're like developing a game at the level of developing a new product in the industry, which is like a startup, which is a million bucks for any new product. Like the the AR training would be like a million dollar product and stuff. You, you can start inch by inch and stuff like that. But to get really far, we need more money. But at the same time, if, if we want to apply for less than the four, then, then we should. If, if our chances are getting less, higher chances of getting less, it's probably better than lower chances of getting more. Because at this time, anything, I agree. anything helps. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. Um, so, so, I mean, I... It may be oversimplifying it, but I'm basically just putting people's names next to questions at this point. Um, yeah. But I don't That's want to it. do that unilaterally. <laughs> yeah, do it. Just do that. Just do honestly. That and, okay. Um, and if we need to have like a writing session where we're all just like looking at it. Yeah. Okay. I if I at you if I at your name next to a question, does that notify you? I think so. No, but okay, it doesn't notify me, but try, I can um, see it. Try do a comment, like do a comment. Okay. Right. And then you can go add Brian. Okay. 
Uh, let's see. Uh, and then you click assign to Brian and then assign. So Brian, did you get that email or no? Uh, in the email? Well, I email. imagine if it's, so if it's connected at bweinberg online at gmail.com, we'll go you'll get a notification. I didn't get an email, but I see that it was assigned to me. So I think what you're doing is enough. Yeah. 